this episode, we're going to take a look at the new Masters of the Universe, Masterverse, New Eternia, Trapjaw. Wow, that's a lot of names. Anyway, stick around. and dorkettes and welcome to it came from my side of the laundry room my name is rob and in this episode we will be taking a look at the new trap jaw figure that is in the masterverse line subset new eternia i have no idea what mattel is up to but this is part of the seven inch scale action figures that first were released with the netflix show by kevin smith of Revelations, Revolution, whatever it was. I enjoyed it, whatever it was. I just can't remember the exact name. Anyway, I actually don't have the package to show at this part like I usually do because I did the unboxing and review portion of this a week ago. I just could not contain myself and I wanted to take a look at the figure, but I didn't have everything hooked up for it. So I just did that part of it just for fun. So hopefully this goes without a hitch. I may not have even have needed to say anything, but I like being truthful. I like being transparent and I like playing with toys. So please forgive me. Anyway, let's jump back in time to last week and take a look at the figure. I just have to say that the packaging for the Masterverse line is perfect. It is so awesome. Everything from the top that features the original Masters of the Universe font and color scheme just punched up to a more modern take of it. You have the exploding boulders that is very reminiscent of the original packaging from the 80s and this artwork on the front I mean it is a great picture of trap jaw and it features like iconic background scenery that a lot of the Masters of the Universe packaging had because here we have just some Eternian castle guard dudes on their sky sleds that came with the battle ram flying around trap jaw in the foreground just looking like a boss so we turn now to the next side and it is one of the most perfect pictures of trap jaw i have ever seen whomever this artist is is impeccably awesome I mean the portrait picture of him looks great the full body picture of him looks great I wish I could find more words in my thesaurus for this but it is just awesome now the back of the packaging shows you a picture of the figure itself and some of the you know action features and accessories that it has on the side and also a who's who of who else is available in this line or this wave of the line and says track jaw evil and armed for combat victory was in reach as track jaw raised his cybernetic claw over man at arms as he man summoned the power of grayskull Trapjaw suddenly crossed dimensions into a shattered world, New Eternia. Now, I'm not 100% sure what the storyline or background is for New Eternia, but from what I can see, just from this packaging and the figure that's on the inside, I'm all on board. Now, the last side features more of that awesome background artwork. And we see Castle Grayskull. We see one of the Talon fighters flying overhead. And we see He-Man fighting Triclops. 
in the jaw front door of Castle Grayskull. So awesome. And I know we didn't even talk about the window and the action figure that we see on the inside, but you know what? We're going to take a look at him right now and all the gear he comes with. Okay, straight out of the package, we have the trap jaw figure. We have a hook hand, a laser gun hand, and a snapping claw hand. And he comes with a sword, albeit a very short sword for someone of his size and stature. I understand why they did it by looking at the back of the box because it's meant to go on his cybernetic arm. But I'm going to have to root around and see if I have a more proper sword for him. But, I mean, plain and simple, this is what he needs. And the only thing that I would put on a wish list would be the original glow-in-the-dark ring. But enough of that. Let's take a closer look at him and his accessories. Okay, let's take a look at Trapjaw's face here. He has a movable mouth, which is awesome. And it looks like you kind of see some of that scar tissue in there from his ripped off jaw. He comes with the hole that the original one came with that he could slide down a string to attack He-Man and his allies. I mean, very nice sculpting. Very good face. Now, let's take a look at his cybernetic arm here, which looks like there's actually a ball joint here. So it's got a full range of motion. I mean, that's a great step up from the original. Some nice detailing here with a cog, and here's like a hydraulic piston, some little bolt like spikes there, where it goes into, I mean this is attached so that won't be coming off, but this looks like if you really wanted to you could pop off this strap, but why would you? On the back here we have a place for his sword, so let's take a look at the sword. Really nice detailing. I mean, look at that. That's kind of Conan-esque. Very nice detailing on it. I'm impressed. I like that. A <laughs> little bit of a tight fit. That looks pretty tight. I mean, no pun intended since it was a tight fit, but... Just saying it like the kids do, but that looks pretty good. I like that with the sword over his shoulder like that. Now his belt is detachable. You can just slide it the, the belt through the hoop there. Or buckle. What am I saying? You have places to put his extra pieces. And scratch his butt while he walks. That's pretty cool. I like that. But let's take a closer look at these while we're on the subject. This is like a rubber. That works. That's nice. Makes it poseable with the legs. Legs have great classic detailing and, I mean, full range of motion. Pretty much what you expect from modern action figures of this scale. The knee has a double bend in it. The foot, you got your ankle and a full range of motion with it. So that's very nice. You have a twist here at the thigh. 
I mean, I think I'm a fan of this line. Now I've got two of the Revelation figures, and I really like them, but it was something I didn't want to get into. I just wanted to stick with the origins or classics that were like the ones I had as a kid, but I think Trapjaw has me sold. I might have to do some digging around to see what, what other figures they have in this scale. Okay, it looks like he's going to be standing up okay on his own. So, we have him there. So, first off is his laser gun. And, I mean, that looks spot on from the original. Very nice. Sorry about my hands. I always get comments about <clears throat> when I wear my gloves. So you get the all natural with marker <laughs> spots all over it and bad skin. Now this is hinged. And it's very reminiscent of a mouth. I love that. That is great. Got some detailing there. Very nice. And you have the hook. Has some nice detailing here. Not poseable, but it's very flexible. Not in a cheap way, just in a good posability way. So, very nice. So, that's all that comes in the packaging. And now we are going to play with Trapjaw in his accessories and see what kind of cool poses we can come up with. So stick around a second. apologize for the spin cycle. You know how it goes around here. But anyway, I just have to say that I love this figure and I mean Trapjaw was definitely one of my favorites growing up. I think he was a lot of people's favorites. But this new modern take on a larger scale of seven inches just has the true essence of the character all his awesome accessories and he just looks great. Now I only have a few of the 7 inch scale Masters of the Universe figures. I'm leaving out all the different names and subsets and all that junk. But I have a few of the 7 inch ones and this figure has prompted me to want to collect more of them. See I was hung up on the purity of it, if you will, and was only collecting the classics or origin figures, you know, which are just a newer version of the classic original figures. But this Trapjaw figure makes me want to take the leap to the bigger scale. I mean, these dudes would fit in perfectly with my classified figures, my Star Wars Black figures, my Marvel Legend figures, and who cares if they're an inch taller? These are Eternians. They should be a little bit bigger. These are godlike beings, so it makes sense. At first, I was hung up on the scale difference, and I could kick myself because there were some awesome figures I left on the pegs because I just hadn't signed up for the 7-inch scale yet. I really kicked myself for that, like I said, and yeah, I regret the choices that I made in the past. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them, and I love getting back to everyone. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or 
any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So anyway, until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.